So, Martin, welcome to Japan and welcome to Hobby Lane. Thank you Happy very here. much, Scott. Thank you. This is your first trip to Japan. I yes, it's my first uh, time in Japan. And I must say, I uh, really enjoy it. Mm. Nice country, so I really like it. Nice well, to be here. I hope your next trip you'll get to spend a little bit more time. <laughs> well, it's my intention to do that. So but next time... You're very busy with your big project. Yeah, it's uh, at this moment very busy with it, uh, for lending the, the tooling of it, mm -hmm. uh, to increase the quality a little bit, so we can meet our release date of February, which is very busy. Okay. Yeah. Well, so um, obviously the market is abuzz with uh, your upcoming B25 release. Yes, thankfully, yes, yes, yes. yes. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how you got into this business? Um, you're involved with another business that's also involved in plastics, right? Yeah, I have a Dutch company. Mm -hmm. It's a plastic injection molding company. Mm -hmm. And because of my uh, own interest in modeling from several years ago, mm -hmm. I decided to combine it uh, some years ago and just start a, uh, let's say, plastic model brand mm -hmm. uh, with major interest, of course, in aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, of course, then you are thinking which model will you start, which scale do you want to start. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end, we decided to do uh, the 132B25. Mm -hmm. Really good aircraft, good looking, uh, good appeal to many people. Mm -hmm. And I think also not too big for 132 scale, so I just said, we go for that one. I see. Yeah. So, so you're a modeler yourself? Yes. What, and you like to build what, aircraft? Or? Uh, aircraft mainly, mm -hmm. 132s mainly scale, but I also uh, built 148, 172. Mm -hmm. I have the same problem as every other modeler, collecting much more than I can build. <laughs> so I stack a lot. Well, companies like ours are thankful that most models yes, collect so more than they can build. <laughs> we're sponsoring your company then. <laughs> so that's, uh, but yes, I really like it. But aircraft mainly, but sometimes also armor, ships, cars, mm -hmm. trucks, trains. I like that also. Okay. Sometimes we have a little bit of diversion from the aircraft. Okay. Yeah. Now, of course, we're, we're curious about how good this kit is going to be. Yes. And uh, obviously, plastic models require a degree of precision in the tooling that's not you know, usually seen in most in other industrial applications. Mm. What kind of tooling has your other company done? I mean, let's ask it this way. You know, do you guys have the credentials to be doing this kind of detail work? Um, it's kind of a loaded question. I think, I think <laughs> yes. I think yes. Uh, with my company, we do technical uh, products, not... Uh, injection mold the kit like this mm -hmm. but some some uh, products require a high quality high tooling mm -hmm. good quality tooling mm -hmm. uh, so I think we we have some basic credentials to make a kit like this uh, but of course it's the first one uh, wing skill we have to learn about that also but I think for the first item we offer a good basic quality which will improve in the oncoming years so yes I think the basic uh, are there mm -hmm. to do it. Well, there's some very, very fine detail in uh, mm -hmm. some of the little parts that I'm, I'm looking at here. Yes. Uh, so this, this kind of level of precision is nothing new for, uh, no. for your company? No. The only thing which is relative new is that we now have spruce with a lot of uh, parts and detail, mm -hmm. which at the end, when you glue it together, should provide a good total package. Mm -hmm. So it should be a nice B25 representation and it should fit very well. And that's something with the technical parts we have done mm -hmm. was not a big issue. It's only two, three parts, four parts, sometime assembly, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So this is another story because we are now talking about a kit, 435 parts, mm -hmm. and all should fit together very snugly. Right. So that's the new part of it. But we are confident we made a good package. Uh, we will listen to the modellers oncoming time uh, to some comments and other things. Uh, things we have to improve, we will improve in, in oncoming kits and things which are good, mm -hmm. we uh, remain on that level. I see. Yes. Now you mentioned, the, you know, you said 132, you know, a B25 is not too big in 132, but come on, look at how big this fuselage is. This is, is going to be a big model when it's built. Yes. Um, why, why 132? That market segment is also, it's active right now, but it's very crowded. I mean, we have you know, obviously Trumpeter doing a lot, even Hasegawa, Tamiya now, mm. um, Wingnut Wings, there's a lot of stuff happening in 132. Yes. Well, it's, I must say it's also a, a personal uh, f a favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, also an idea I had long a time ago. And of mm -hmm. course, it's at this time it's very crowded, especially the last five years, mm -hmm. when the 132 scale was coming up very fastly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think two-engine bomber was not an item we have seen until now, uh, beside the Rafael Junker 88 mm -hmm. in 132. And I think uh, many people will say it's big, we don't buy it maybe because it's so big. But I think I have another opinion. People mm -hmm. sometimes just want to have something and build it. Mm -hmm. And even when it's big, you can find a space to, to put it somewhere. Well, there's always the ceiling. You know, you get some fish wire and you yes. hang it from the ceiling. But, um, or in the shed, you can <laughs> hang it on the shed. It, 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 yeah, you can, no uh, problem. But uh, you know, the level of detail I'm seeing uh, in this kit and also the workmanship, I don't know if you can tell on, on the video here, but uh, the clarity, for example, of these, these transparent canopy yes, parts very is just, good. just brilliant. Yes. Um, this is going to be a kit that, you know, if I were to get this, I'm going to want to build this, which means I need to put it somewhere. Uh, this isn't just something to put yeah. in my closet. This is going to no. be beautiful. I think. I think when you really want, you can find some, some space where you can mm -hmm. put it, uh, will be no problem. So, and well, but we have to see if that's a good thought, mm -hmm. but I'm uh, almost 99% sure um, it's a good decision to do so. Okay. So we will proceed with other items, two engine ones, and see how the, the market will react, how the modellers will react. So your, your primary segment that you're looking at would be two engine aircraft in 132? Yes. In the beginning, uh, so, but we will also do single engine later, and we will also do something in 148, 172. Uh, everything is possible. Wow. There are, I think, subjects enough to do. Mm -hmm. We still have uh, not been done. Uh, also, we have subjects in s certain skills which are already really old. Molds of technology of 25 years ago. I or, think, or more. <laughs> or more, <laughs> yeah. which I think are due for replacement. Mm -hmm. uh, so, with all the manufacturers which are, which are now uh, present in the world, uh, even as a wing scale, we still can find uh, items we can produce mm -hmm. uh, which we can sell. I'm sure of that. Yeah, well, it, it seems to me, as a merchant in this industry, that some mm. of the old uh, and well-known companies have actually become rather conservative uh, in their offerings in, uh, in you know, the aircraft these days. Uh, and I think you're right, that there are a number of very obvious candidates uh, yeah. for replacement. I mean, we all love Monogram, but uh, a lot of yes. those tools are now 40 years old. Yes, so. I agree with you, yeah. yes. I think the monochrome kits are very good. The accuracy mm -hmm. is good, outlining is good. The detail, uh, you can tell about it what you want, but it's also still sufficient. You mm -hmm. can make very good replicas of it. But if you compare it with the detail, uh, the standard at this moment, mm -hmm. it should have uh, replacements. And we are not talking about monochrome kits uh, in general, but also other kits. Right. So um, I think there are still a lot of room for a manufacturer mm -hmm. to make uh, kits. But I also agree with you that many manufacturers sometimes have really um, uh, conversive, uh, um, how do you call it? Mm, conversative uh, choices. Conservative. Yeah. Uh, for wing scale, me as a modeler sometimes like to, to choose a model not so conservative. Mm -hmm. So something really, something people don't, do not expect. Yeah, well, the B25 is, I think, an excellent first choice. Yeah, it's, it's really one. I don't yes. think you're gonna have any trouble selling these. No, uh, so, and after that, P61, B26 oh. will coming. Wow. So that will keep us a little bit occupied for 2011. P61, that's, that's an interesting choice. Yeah, it's a really a good one. It's also a uh, very nice aircraft, mm -hmm. not so common, but I think People will really like it, and also that uh, version will sell also. Okay. Um, tell us about uh, your company's, how, how you're actually getting the work done. All of the design work is being done in the Netherlands? Uh, both. It's done in the Netherlands, but also a part is done in China. Mm -hmm. That has to do with uh, engineering, means a lot of hours making, doing things. In China, it's more cheap than in Holland. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing is the most, most part of the engineering will be done in, in, in China, mm -hmm. but the checking and giving the direction, how it will look like, how it should fit together, the part layout we are giving from Holland. Mm -hmm. uh, that means for the engineering of the kit, 
but it means also for the engineering of the mold. Right. Because my factory has to be able with, to work with the molds also. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it can also be that the molds or the production of the kits can be done in Holland, mm -hmm. but sometimes can be done in China also. It's, what's, it's more convenient to do so, we are doing. But to be honest, you hear, you hear both good stories and bad stories about working in China. How, yes. How has your experience been so far? I must say, I can only say 100% positive. Oh, that's great. You have to be on top of it, but you can see what's on the table. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. You have to do a lot of effort to get it like this way. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you give your modeling input, your technical input about tooling, about plastic, uh, they are really capable against a, a very good commercial price mm -hmm. to give you a good package. Mm -hmm. People are really friendly, helpful. So for me personally, I can only say 100% really good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't regret it. Right. Well, uh, well, again, I don't know how much of the detail we'll be able to see on the video here, uh, but what I'm seeing on these sprues is, is just brilliant stuff. Uh, and I don't know if we have uh, Dutch technicians or, or Chinese technicians to thank uh, <laughs> at this point, but um, this does not look like you know the first offering from a new manufacturer to me. I know, <laughs> that's what we did. Um, it took me a long time to get to this to this point mm -hmm. uh, by doing samples, doing some tests with manufacturers, tool makers finding one, uh, somebody sometimes saying goodbye to, to one, try a new one. It's not something you would just do in one year. Right. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to, to come so far. Mm -hmm. And I always say you only have one um, uh, chance to make a first impression. Mm -hmm. So if the first kit you already That's say is not very good, uh, how do you explain to people that the second one or the third one will be better? Right. So the first one should be good. Mm -hmm. It's of course not perfect, but we will improve. Yeah. But well, as you as you have stressed with us here, these are still test shots. Yeah. Um, but uh, these are pretty good looking test shots. Yes. Yeah. But the real ones will be still will be better. The finish mm -hmm. will be better. The detail will be more crisp. Mm -hmm. uh, so the injection molding quality will be better. Um, this is only T1, T2. Mm -hmm. uh, normally you go to T3, T4. <laughs> So we need uh, two or three test shots more to, mm -hmm. keep, to get it, everything getting uh, very well. Mm -hmm. And that's also the reason why we delayed uh, the release to uh, February instead of just running for the December, mm -hmm. which we could have done at the end. But we want to uh, offer our clients very good kit. Mm -hmm. And I think quality is priority one and deadline is priority two. Mm -hmm. Yes. What... Um Going backwards a bit here, mm. what was the the key inspiration for you? I mean, as a modeler, and then you were involved in a company that uh, that does injection molding. Mm. What, at what point did you decide that you know you've got to make my own hobby company, my own model fit my? And what was the reason, <coughs> or what was your, your your mental process that caused your entrepreneurship well, to blossom there? The mental process started uh, already a long time ago, maybe, maybe something like 20, 25 years ago, wow. when I was still modeling myself also, mm -hmm. because I was buying 132 kits from Metzbox, Rafael. Mm -hmm. But after 10 years, it was still the same kits on the market. Right. Not in 132, nothing happened much. Right. So uh, then I thought, it, I want to have this one, I want to have this one. Then I started, it would be great to start your own brand and make it with my own. But at that moment, I didn't have the knowledge about tool making, other things, to do it. Right. So many years evolved, always the, uh, the idea kept in my mind. So it kept evolving until a few years ago uh, when I was doing the plastic injection molding uh, process mm -hmm. and, and the tool making process that I really started to think I'm going to start it. Only because you get, when you get older and a little bit wiser, <laughs> you also know that when you want to have fun in your life, you mm -hmm. should do something you really like to do in your life. Oh yes, I, I learned and this, this myself. This is this is something <laughs> I really like. I enjoy to do it. Mm -hmm. It combines all the uh, the things I do in my daily life. So I feel privileged that I can do it. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you're the right man for the job, and it looks like you've uh, you've found the right people to, to work with you. So yes, far. I'm sure. I think Hobby Log uh, will do a good job. 
I'm sure there's no problem. Well, with quality like this and a, a product this attractive, I think yeah. our job's almost done for us. But, uh, okay. but we'll do our best and we look forward to a string of exciting uh, additional products from uh, thank you very much. in the future. Thank you. Thanks for your time. We today, will do Martin. our best to make yeah. good kits later. Right. Okay, thank you. Right.